Sydney sailing, it's a constant looking at times. Um, because Beverly is um, skipper today, aren't you, Bev? Mm -hmm. And um, for my crimes. Yeah. So we've got a tidal gate ahead of us, which is Calf Sound, and um, Beverly is basically wants to go through at four o'clock. Four yeah. o'clock. That's roughly the, uh, the tide in the sound will just have turned from north going to south going. It's supposed to do it at a quarter to four, given recent experiences. Um, when we went through bang on the time time of the turn. I'd like to go through 15 minutes later. Yeah, this is the plan. Um, right. But basically what we're doing is just assessing everything as we get there. Our estimated time of arrival at the minute is 20 past four, so we need to make up 20 minutes. Yeah, so what we're thinking at the moment is um, to put the engine on and I think he's decided it's going to go on at half past three. About half past three, put the engine on, uh, start doing about four to four and a half knots and that should get us through the sound pretty much on time. So it's just sort of like making these little adjustments and... Um, Once we're out the other side, I'm happy for the engine to go off and the sails to come out again. <sighs> if there's any wind on the other side. Because of course, you've got to reassess your situation. You'll be on the other side of the island. This wind's coming from the north. Hmm. So again, you just got to reassess and see what we're doing from there. Totally. Good news on the engine front. You want me to say it again, don't you? I do! Uh, rolling out the full Genoa, our uh, speed has now increased by half a knot, up to three and a half knots. And our arrival time is uh, literally just a few minutes after four o'clock. So that means that the engine might be postponed. <laughs> so you might not need the engine until we're a lot closer in. <laughs> Happy days! <laughs> Beverly is basically uh, saying I shouldn't have said we're going to no engine. Because as soon as you said it, the wind died. <laughs> Dropped from 13 knots to 8 as soon as you said that. And this is another reason that you've got to constantly make adjustments because the, you're being powered by wind. And I'm afraid to say wind is a fickle thing, isn't it, Bev? It can be, yes. <sighs> but it's my fault. I shouldn't have said anything. Anything. Right, recess at half past three. Yes. <laughs> the engine might be going on earlier now. Well, we're coming up to Calf Sound, and um, when Beverly was doing the plan, she wanted to be at the entrance of Calf Sound at four o'clock. Now that is 15 minutes after the tide flips. Now the reason she wanted to be about 15 minutes is because my Dunica D sound was bang on time. And it was a rough day. And uh, Beverly is hoping that that extra 15 minutes will just mean that uh, she goes through on a smoother passage. Yes, basically the tide won't be going one way at the start and one way and the other way at the middle. Yeah. This is what happened in uh, Donica D Copeland's side. It certainly is. So um, she's just let it establish for 15 minutes. Now we put the engine on um, and we've put the sail away just so that she's got complete control of the yacht. It's a very, very narrow thing. I don't know how wide it looks on camera, but in reality it's only like a couple, about 100 metres. Yeah, and you've also got a couple of tricky turns in the middle of it. Um, yeah, but they're not that tricky, but you, you know, you've just sort of got to do... I've got two buttons, I can see one. Yeah, you've got a couple of things you've got to do in the, in the sound. So you just, uh, Beverly just prefers to uh, be under engine for that. But, um, yeah, we're just coming up and we're going to see what it's like. Yeah, two minutes I've got to work here. Oh, they're actually on the rocks there. I know. Oh, I see them. There's quite a few there. Yeah. And also 
this one. when you're very very close like we are you can get another half a knot uh, out of your main but we're just passing some um, caves <laughs> something about caves that just intrigues me I'm intrigued by the layers of rock and how they all crumble and it's just it's all falling apart it's, it's fascinating to look at it yeah. what's even more fascinating is the pots <laughs> oh, God, they're say. everywhere um, Port St. Mary is bad for pots. Um, in fact, yeah, Beverly and I... One there, one there, one over there, that's one back there, mm. another one over there, and there's another one just come up in front of us there. Mm. So um, and... Um, uh, six sets from where I'm standing. But the thing is, there's a boat that we know um, that was actually featured in the RNLI uh, programme. Um, because just here, in fact, at Port St. Mary, uh, because it got a, um, it basically ran over a pot. Yep. So if you do come to Port St. Mary, do be careful. It is really yep. bad. That particular boat tangled its rudder and its prop uh, on a bit of a bouncy night. The RNLI like we were in here took them off. And the following morning, the boat was upside down on the beach. Yeah. <sighs> well, I got my way. We were in Port St. Mary. Um, we weren't sailing, so um, we've popped in and we're on the wall again. Uh, however, this time it was my turn to go up the ladder. And of course, I've got a spring tomorrow, so we've got a six metre rise, so I had to go up six metres. <laughs> uh, but we're just sitting here enjoying the beautiful weather. Oh, and the sun is just lovely, and we're just soaking up rays. And eating my undercooked dinner, because I couldn't wait any longer. No, Beverly was a bit starved, so... <laughs> but, oh, it was delicious. Crunchy rice. Mm. But, oh, it's just so pleasant, and it's just nice to come to places like this and enjoy them. Mm. Okay, up to the minute with your roving news reporter. Uh. 
And in the field we have Gainer. <sighs> Alright, well there's a couple of things. First of all, if you do have the choice at Port St Mary of the mooring balls at Springs, uh, do take them. Uh, we thought, we decided that to come onto the wall uh, because it would be a little bit more protected. In a minute. Um, which of course it is. But um, we're on a six metre rise. Um, so we've got two issues. First of all, uh, we rose so high on the hard wall that um, the solar panels knocked on the top of the harbour wall and basically pulled them out of the socket. So uh, Beverly and I have fixed that, we've sorted that out, um, but we now have had to also reduce the line because I basically geared us for the 0.2 metres um, low. But the thing is, I've geared us, I've had to take all that slack off because we've drifted so far out of the wall. It was allowing the boat to twist a lot, wasn't it? Was it was allowing the boat to twist a lot more, which is why, of course, the um, solar panels uh, went over the wall and just lifted out. So Yeah, basically the solar panels were actually over the harbour wall. Basically, yes. <laughs> and when we dropped down, they caught on top of it. Yeah. They caught on top, which is why... Um, if you don't have a large solar panel array in the back, you might be okay. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm not saying that this is a problem that everybody would have. Because, um, you know... Ooh. They don't have the... Tea. But the good thing... Oh, right, the... right. Cut the waffle, make the tea. Okay. The other good thing about mullions is I'm in my nighty. <laughs> hey, cut the waffle, make the tea. Sorry. So what's happening if, uh, today if in Ventures in Yachting Life? Stupid applause, oh, aren't we? Um, no, we're getting ready to go so that as soon as the sun comes up and we can see where the pots are, we can leave. Um, the wind should be favourable for a run to Douglas today. Um, so, fingers crossed. Uh, we wouldn't want to come through the calf with the wind direction we've got today because it'll be wind over tide coming through there and that is not a recommended passage time. So we've got to go out of here, um, past Langness Point where there's a lot of overfalls and up to Douglas. Hopefully it won't take more than about three hours. The only issue though is um, why, what's the other reason uh, for us waiting until we can see Bev? Pots, crab pots are everywhere. No, not the pots. It's health and safety Bev. Oh. I've got to crawl up that six metre wall and tile the knots that are on the top and I'm not doing it in the dark. <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, so let's get things prepped down here, get all this disaster zone tidied up and get ready to go. Oh, Bad from the wall. No, but that wall really protects you. No, I looked over the wall, I looked this way. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Well, let's be on this. This is, this is swelly stuff. Well, it's a bit of a windy day, isn't it? The wind is absolutely howling out there. Um, Beverly and I, um, went out off the wall this morning and we were intending to uh, go out but we had two meter waves um, we were t twisting the boat at 45 degrees and we have learned that you are allowed to go back so who was on locker duty today <sighs> we both were we ran right and checked all the lockers we thought but we obviously missed this one and, um, you know, there are just bits all over the floor where they've come out. Um, <laughs> this is not good. Go on. Yeah, things things have just come out. They're all over the floor. Um, things like there's loo rolls on the bathroom floor. Uh, pairs of glasses. 
<sighs> the cushions were on the floor because I threw them there when I was doing the sea cut, so that at least I caused that mayhem. I don't mind that. But thankfully all the cutlery and crockery was in the sink, but the biscuits and, and butter did not start in the sink and they're now in there. <laughs> they should have been put in the fridge, but they're now in the sink with everything else. Yay! The cups fell over inside the locker. Dude, it was a bit rough out. It was, wasn't it, Beverly? It so. was horrible out. It, and I could see Chicken Rock in the distance. And that baleful tar of Sauron was looking at me and I was thinking, you're five or ten miles away, but I can still get ya. The other thing is, uh, yesterday we actually Where saw... My bookmark fell off as well. Oh, well, I'll have to reread the book again. Find the place. But, you know, you are allowed to go back, which is why we decided to come back. But we came back to the mooring because, again, tonight we've got a six metre tide and that puts our solar panels above the wall. Uh, we're at the top of the tide. And last night we swung ground and the solar panels actually tried to lift the boat. It is why they came out of the sockets. They're not designed for that. So we decided to come onto a ball. But the mooring, um, the harbour master, has let us take one of the balls further in to the bay. So we're not on the visitor moorings. We're on a ball much further in. But even so, there's a lot of swell out there. And the boat behind us is a racing boat, so quite light. And it's swinging an awful lot. We're swinging as well, but not quite as much because we're a heavier boat. <laughs> 